circumstances and considers that Labor Day is a day for victory over imperialism 
and the exploitation of peoples. And it must also be for the judicial on occupation and domination of the peoples. At this moment, there are no longer any workers in the Gaza Strip. They are all resisting the Israeli occupying occupation forces. Workers of the world, unite and put pressure on our governments to establish the justice, stop colonialism, domination, and eliminate racism. Press to stop the genocide war in Gaza and boycott the productions of the Israeli occupying state. The real strength is the unity of the leftists in the world. And wherever there is injustice, it is their homeland. And Palestine is the homeland of the free. Palestine enlists you to support it and calls on you to help it. Despite the genocide we are being subjected to, we will celebrate Labor Day to regain our strengths and to show that there is no alternative to socialism in light of the world that does not care about our demand and our right and ignores our right to self-determination, establishing our state and returning to the homes from which we were displaced. Continue your struggle for the sake of future generations and resist in order for us to live free, freely and justly. Freedom for the Palestinian prisoners. Freedom for Palestine and its people. Long life the worker and the leftist in the world. And thank you very much. the only modernist organization fighting for their lives in Gaza. There is also the PFLP, the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. And they, they sent out a May Day message which I am honored to read to you guys right now. So this is straight from the mouths of the PFLP. Long live the 1st of May as a day of struggle for the workers and free people of the world against the enemies of humanity. All great Palestinian people, all people of the Palestinian working class and strugglers everywhere, oh, all the free and honorable in our nation and the world. Every year on the 1st of May, the peoples of the world, especially the global working class and all the poor, oppressed and downtrodden in this world, celebrate in the face of brutal, savage and, is, and enslaving practices perpetuated against them by a ferocious financial elite which disregards all human values and principles, striving with their might to perpetuate their control and dominance over the peoples of the world and their resources, using for their political, economic and social objectives everything that military industries and modern technology have developed and all methods of treachery and deceit to achieve their goals and interests without any moral or human scruple or conscience. Our people, along with the workers and free people of the world, commemorate the 1st of May this year at a time when they are subjected to the most brutal and fierce campaign of genocide and ethnic cleansing, surpassing in savagery and bloodiness the fascists and the Nazis at the hands of a group of murderers calling themselves an army for an invasive replacement entity under the leadership, partnership, support, cover, and complicity of the American administration and the colonial Western imperial powers, the enemies of humanity. Shame! They believe that with their crimes and brutality, they can break the will of our people and impose surrender and defeat on them. In a frenzied attempt to not only kill humans and destroy stones and uproot trees, but also erase the identity, history, and civilization of our people and make it impossible for our people to remain on their land. Shame. At a time when the massacres 
and crimes committed by the Zionist Imperialist Alliance continue and escalate, our steadfast people, believing in the justice of their cause in all their cities, villages, and towns across the entire land of historic Palestine and in all places of their pre presence, especially our steadfast people in the Gaza Strip, write a new page of heroism and miracle every day, the likes of which history has rarely witnessed. Despite the wounds and pain, despite the blood and body parts, and the torrents of flowing blood and ethnic cleansing in its ugliest forms, our people always rise from under the rubble and debris, carrying their wounds and marching towards victory and freedom, raising the flag of resistance with more determination and belief in the justice of their cause and the inevitability of victory, their weapons being patience, steadfastness, and resistance, and the support of all the free and honorable people in our nation and the world. As we bow in reverence and awe before the sacrifices, steadfastness, and determination of our people, we must emphasize the importance of strengthening the internal front and fortifying it, and unity of stance and performance across various political, field, and social levels, and depriving the enemy of the ability to achieve through deceit and political maneuvers what it failed to achieve on the battlefield. We also call for enhancing social solidarity and supporting among the various political and social components of our people to overcome this ordeal with greater strength and resilience in the face of conspiracies and thwarting them. In light of the intensification of the confrontation between the forces of, in of aggression, injustice, and war profiteers, and the forces of peace, justice, freedom, and humanity in the world, despite all the financial capabilities, military capabilities, and economic hegemony that the forces of aggression possesses, the forces of freedom and justice grow more aware and discerning in defending their interests against the imperialist plans aimed to eliminate all noble human and ethical values. In this context, we extend our highest expressions thank of thanks and appreciation to the, all the free and honorable people in the world who stand today alongside our people in their just cause in the face of, Zi of imperialist Zionist crimes. We send a salute of respect and pride to the university students all over the world, especially to the students at American universities who are protesting against the crimes of the occupation and the support of the American administration for it and who demand a halt to the aggression against the Palestinian people. We also salute all the labor and women's organizations that stand in solidarity with our people and their cause and all the free and honorable people who fill the squares and fields of the capitals and cities of the world in support of our people and supporting their just cause. Glory and eternity to the martyrs, freedom to the prisoners, and healing to the wounded. A salute to our steadfast people across the entire land of historic Palestine and in all places of their presence. A salute of love and loyalty to our brave workers as they, alongside all components of our people, political and social, wage the battle for national, economic, and social liberation. A salute to the global working class in the face of injustice, aggression, and the onslaught of global imperialism. A salute to all the honorable and free people in the world who stand against injustice and aggression. Solidarity!
and commitment in righting the injustices in our own homeland, Canada's complicity in the Gaza genocide is a continuation of its long-standing conquest and a domination as a settler society. Every indigenous person in so-called Canada knows what it means to live in an occupied state. We are the descendants of residential school survivors. We are the ones who were taken and inherited the blood memory of our ancestors. The genocide of Palestine from the north to the south has most notably impacted children. We have too many relatives who have lost their children in child services and are fighting to bring them home. This is the legacy of residential school. This is the legacy of the Millennium Scoop. Indigenous youth account for the highest suicide rates in Canada as a direct result of the intergenerational trauma and continued disregard of our inherited rights. Since 1948, Palestinians have been living under a system of settler colonialism that has controlled their access to food and water. With Israel also denying Palestinians access to water. Since the 2007 siege on Gaza, Israel has calculated the amount of calories Palestinians need to live and allow them food and aid accordingly. Since October 2023, Israel has created a famine. According to the Canadian government, there are currently 28 royal water advisories in 26 communities. This does not include the nations that do not have the infrastructure for clean drinking water or short-term boil water advisories. The community of Nishnanaga has had a boil water advisory for 28 years. The price gouging of indigenous people in the north means that many of our relatives go without and face food insecurity. Just as our people are we're forced to live Forced onto small unwanted parcels of land called reserves, many Palestinians have spent their lives in cornering off parcels of land imprisoned by checkpoints and roads only accessible by settlers. This is settler colonialism. Just as our Palestinian brothers and sisters die as martyrs, our relatives are overrepresented among missing and murdered people. Our people are collectively overrepresented among prisoners. Toronto Police Services just released a report that Indigenous women are 1.9 times more likely to be arrested than any other person in Toronto. And this came from their own research study. Yeah. Indigenous women of Toronto spend more time in custody than any other person. And this is their own research study. Just as we fight for the future of our land and waters, Palestinians fight for their homeland. The occupiers of Turtle Island, Canada, and the United States are the suppliers of the Zionist war machine called Israel. Canada and the USA supply weapons to Israel to carry out the genocide of Palestinian people. The same people that continue to oppress First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people are complicit in war crimes globally. We denounce occupation worldwide. There is no peace on stolen land. As long as Palestine is not free, we will never be free. As long as imperialism exists worldwide, we will continue to live under oppression. We must not be afraid. We must, be, we must not be complicit in the face of genocide. We must continue to show up for Palestine, and we must continue to escalate. One of the conditions when I was released was that I was no longer allowed to protest or demonstrate for any cause. Palestinian women. Long live the 
bring yourself, but you brought traditional drummers and so many people. And I apologize for not being able to give you a proper introduction as I didn't know. But I'm very grateful. Thank you so much for all of you coming. and as well for Palestine. So please remember that it's a community of us people here. It's not just me. There's many First Nations women here today yeah. to stand in solidarity.
that unless we are fighting for peace globally, we are supporting war and the military industrial complex in all of its forms. And to paraphrase Naomi Klein, if there is ever a choice between a child's life and a gun, we must choose the child's life every single time.
serve, that they serve the interests of the few and not the many, as they continue to support Israel's brutal massacre in Gaza. Between 2015 and 2023, the genocidal state of Israel awarded Canadian-based companies more than $150 million to purchase arms that include explosives and aircraft components that are being used to murder more than 36,000 Palestinians, 70 of whom are women and children, and more than 83,000 injured in both Gaza and the occupied West Bank since October 7th. Shame! This genocide against the Palestinian people started in the 1920s and continues to this day, all permitted by the capitalistic powers of the world for their own fascist gain. Between 2018 and 2022, the so-called State of Canada imported more than over $130 million in arms from Israel. And in the same time period, raised 1.2 billion tax-free dollars through Canadian charities for the genocidal state. Shame! When we have a deep healthcare crisis where patients are being treated in stretchers in hospital hallways, a deteriorating educational system where only the wealthy can afford education, a devastating housing crisis, and are unable to provide clean drinking water to First Peoples communities. Something is very wrong! As we witness the horrors continue to unfold in Palestine, we must all join this mass movement that refuses to remain complicit in Israel's genocidal project. We know that with the power of the people behind us, and with the tool of political organization, and we are capable of victory. That victory is ours to fight for, and it is ours to take. We call on all of you here today to join us in this struggle, for the struggle of the Palestinian national liberation. It is not just a struggle for the Palestinians alone. It is a struggle for every oppressed person every person who refuses to stand for injustice, and every person who dreams of freedom. Today, Gaza is at the center of the world, a small strip of land that belongs to a small but brave nation, which over a hundred years has fought against the most sophisticated and army-advanced empires refusing to surrender. The Palestinian nation will accomplish victory within our lifetime, and each of you here has a role to play! <laughs> Workers and oppressed peoples within North America have always been central to anti-war movements. We have organized within our workplaces, advanced anti-imperialist struggles within our labor unions, and refused to sit idly by why our governments back, agen back genocide and war and wage war. Today, let us pledge our refusal to be complicit in Israel's genocidal project. Let us commit to anti-imperialism and the struggle for Palestinian liberation and freedom. And amidst the student intifada that has spread across the world, let us join the brave students who are organizing and sacrificing themselves. Let us join them to, fully, to fulfill their role as revolutionaries and stand up for Palestinians and all oppressed people across the globe. The students are showing us the true meaning of international struggle through their vigilance, their discipline, and their willingness to sacrifice. Similarly, the revolutionary potential of labor is unparalleled. Only workers can keep this machine going. Mayday should 
should be a holiday commemorating victory for the exploited classes of the world and not a liberal marker of steady progress towards acquiring measly handouts from the powerful. Palestine has shown us that the forces that oppress Palestinians over there are the same forces responsible for our oppression here. A commitment to freeing Palestine is a commitment to freeing ourselves. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Day. The Nakba Day is a day where around 1 million Palestinians were exiled from their home in Palestine in 1948, including my own father when he was five years old. And we are all born for returning, and we have the right to return. Indigenous people say there could be no reconciliation without restitution. 
Jerry. construction sites, 
to the Canadian pension funds for public service employees with investments in Lockheed Martin that supply weapons to the IOF. Workers in so-called Canada must acknowledge the ways our labor and our comforts are tied to colonial genocide. The freedom fighters of Palestine risk it all to achieve liberation, and we must be inspired to do the same and refuse to be complicit in genocide. We must take risk and we must collectivize it. Our liberation of labor from capital here is impossible without the na national liberation of Palestinians and all oppressed nations from imperialism and settler colonialism. There are workers who refuse to remain complicit in these institutional arrangements who are putting their jobs and bodies on the line for Palestine, such as transport workers in Belgium, Japan, and so-called Vancouver who have blockaded the supplies of weapons from the global north to the Zionist entity. <laughs> Students across the world right now in what the Palestinian resistance is calling the student intifada are also courageously risking their access to education for Gaza. We salute them all and echo the Palestinian resistance's call to escalate. More and more students and workers must heed these calls. Despite the attempt by the imperialist ruling classes to confuse and divide us, students, workers, and oppressed peoples are coming together to liberate Palestine. And despite their attempts to criminalize and silence us, more and more from all walks of life are rising up. In the spirit of the Palestinian resistance, we emphatically affirm the right of working class and oppressed peoples to resist by any means necessary. Workers and oppressed peoples of the world unite. Long live Palestinian resistance and long live international solidarity. Thank you so much to Sammy Dune. All right, now we're marching on Queens Park. Let's go. We've got some catching up to do! Exploited 
by the anti village violence are also met with detailed practice repression for asserting their main day rally back home. Recently, same. rally back home, Filipinos who were calling for wage increase were dispersed with water cameras and six activists were arrested. That is how repression works in the Philippines, here in Toronto, all across the world. Shame on the state repression! Shame! Filipinos are resisting the ongoing economic struggle of imperialism and puppet installed government, like Marcos Jr. supports and enables the state government by selling out our locals, resources, and our people as key sources of labor. Shame! Oh! Filipinos in Canada currently constitute a third largest immigrant population, the majority of whom have experienced the professionalization, exploitation, and unsafe working conditions of forced migrants. Along with this, Canada's load is about to take off the land where Canada's mining industry continues to fuel the Philippines' economic and social degradation through, like, through the large scale mining activities and privatization of lands that continue to harm and terrorize indigenous peoples and peasants. Again, we see how imperialism manifests in our countries and the systematized forced migration and displacement. And we see this as a global phenomenon, be it from Vietnam, India, South Africa, and Latin America. It is our duty to embrace the spirit of voluntary internationalism because it is our urgent task to unite our worker struggle into a joint struggle.
Rushi Limbaugh is chair of the 1440-1442 Lawrence Avenue West Tenants Association, part of the York South Western Tenant Union. He's been leading a rent strike in the building against the landlord, Barney Gibbons, since October, demanding an end to excessive rent increases and a commitment to repairs inside apartments. The y YSWTU is a union of working class tenants in Northwest Toronto that organizes tenants against predatory landlords. No evictions here, there, or anywhere. Here's the Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? Good afternoon. I want to first off, we have one minute silent for revolutionary our brother, children, a woman, Mary, is already dead in Israel. He is still the innocent. And we have one minute just keep silent for our people. housing in Toronto's downtown east. So without further ado, give it up for our last but not least speaker, John Clark. Thank you very, very much, colleagues. Uh, I'd like to say that uh, this being International Workers' Day, I look forward to the day when we can shut everything down and organize a uh, May Day celebration on May 1st itself. And we'll be able to do that uh, because uh, we'll be in a situation where the working class has power, controls the workplaces, and is able to celebrate May Day in the way it really needs to be celebrated. It's worth remembering, and other people have spoken about the revolutionary tradition of May Day. That's an enormously important consideration. Uh, May Day isn't about uh, winning some improvements or regulating the system a little better, it is a distinctly revolutionary occasion and we need to address it in that spirit. But the last speaker, talking about a struggle of working class tenants, reminds us of something that's also very important, is that May Day came out of a struggle in Chicago in which working class people fought over the length of the working day. The most practical kind of struggle imaginable. 
and yet it was taken up and led by people who gave their lives because they wanted to do more than limit the working day because they wanted to build a society in which there was no more exploitation, in which the exploiters were overthrown and the, the exploiters became the class that took power. Now in terms of the struggles that we are waging across the globe at the moment, there's one very important consideration. It's certainly not that struggles aren't happening, there are massive explosive struggles happening. But unfortunately, we're also dealing with a situation where the other side is showing a level of intransigence and refusal to budge that is much greater than it was in the past. And we can look at some of the key situations going on in the world to show us that. If we look at what's happening in Gaza right now, there is unquestionably a vast crime against humanity that is being inflicted on the population. There's no doubt about that. But we can't imagine for a moment that those who are inflicting it are having it all go their own way. Let's remember that the resistance in Gaza, seven months after the military objective of crushing it was laid down, has not been crushed. It's still strong. And they are in considerable, they are in considerable disarray. The entire region has become a powder keg not just in the sense of a possible military confrontation, but within the Arab countries, the population is seething with rage and anger about the situation. Their own social and economic grievances are compounded by the horror of what's happening. And I'll say right now that Biden's strategy of so-called normalization is in tatters. The biggest lackey in the Arab world wouldn't want to shake hands with Benjamin Netanyahu at the moment. Their international institutions are in crisis. The global south is rebelling against this situation. And right here, in the heart of the beast, in the imperialist centers, we have a situation where there is an unprecedented movement of solidarity with the Palestinians that has emerged. And that movement has stood the test of repression, intimidation, slander and lies and it hasn't flinched, it's only grown stronger and that's an enormously important game. And also now, that movement has come onto the universities with these magnificent encampments which ironically began in the United States itself. An enormously important movement. You know, uh, Marx and Engels actually said that uh, it's actually said that the dominant ideas of any age are those of its ruling class. Well, right now some very different ideas are being forged in the, on the universities. Right now universities are becoming sites of struggle. Right now the dominant ideas are being challenged by ideas of liberation and international solidarity. And that's an enormously important game for us. But at the same time, we must also recognise that they are digging their heels in. Biden and the, the Trudeau and they equivocate and duck and weave a little more, but they are continuing to give support for the genocide. They are continuing to prop up their garrison state in the Middle East at all costs. Which only means that the movement has to grow stronger and be even more determined. We can see the same in the, in the struggles that have broken out, the same phenomenon over the last couple of years. In France, a movement uh, taken forward by the cost of living crisis against the brutal cuts to the pension system achieved a level of mobilization that had not been seen since the great struggles of 1968. And yet, Macron dug his heels in. We had a situation in Britain last year where the strike wave that took place saw workers going on strike in ways that hadn't happened since the days of Margaret Thatcher. These are remarkable things. The same could be said of the education workers' struggle right here in Ontario, where you, had, you saw the Doug Ford government on the ropes not knowing what to do. But the big problem, apart from their intransigence, is at this point our movements are locked into a perspective of putting on a good show, of organising on the basis of trying to show our potential strength in the hope that those in power will go back to the old models of compromise. Right now the system is in crisis and they're not in a position to make those kind of compromises anymore. So if we play for a draw, we're going to lose every single time. So, this speaks to the kind of resistance that we have to take up. 
we have to take up not days of action, not limited forms of struggle, not compartmentalised struggles, but we have to bring it all together into one big working class movement, one big international movement. We have to take up unlimited, unconditional forms of struggle against the system that we're fighting. When it comes to the struggle of, of Palestinian solidarity, we have to achieve a situation where we arrive at the point where we can sever the lifeline of economic, military and diplomatic support that maintains the garrison state in the Middle East so that the people in the Middle East can fight on fair terms. That's what we have to achieve. We're dealing with a situation now on May Day, let us say, where we need to remind ourselves that there are many urgent practical struggles that we need to engage in. If we are going to, uh, if we're going to do that, we need to remember the lessons of May Day. We need to remember the, the model of working class solidarity, the vision of social transformation, of revolutionary social transformation. When he faced death, the Haymarket martyr, who paid the price for his struggle, Auguste Spice, made the memorable comment that uh, there will come a time when our silence will be louder than the voices you strangle here today. That silence is really reaching an enormous pitch of decibels at this present time. It's reaching it in the struggle in Gaza, it's reaching it in the struggle of the West Bank, it's reaching it in all the anti-colonial struggles that take place right here, including right here in Turtle Island, and it is, in, it is found in working class struggles all across the world. We have to take up a struggle that is equal to the task that we face. We have to build a movement that's equal to that task. And the tradition of May Day is the thing that can bring that together for us. Long live May Day. Thank you very much. Free, free Palestine! Free, free. Make it clear! that until our students' demands are met, we will not leave! <laughs> this move, so we will, we will not stop, we will not rest! They have the international working class overthrowing colonial oppression, overthrowing it all the stuff. That's what we want. International revolution, intifada revolution. So we're gonna end off with a chant Thank you to the Labour Meeting Committee rally is over now, but we are here for the students because we are here continuously from the community supporting the students. So feel free to do what you guys want to do. So I'm going to give it out to these champions, these lions. They have energy inside their hearts. The more energy you give them, the more energy they give back. So you got two guys over there. Let's see how you're going to do it. Take a look. As my comrade has said, we will not last, we will not leave until our demands are met. And our demands are very simple. They're so simple that we can chant it. Disclose, divest, we will not... Campus of University of Toronto, one of the biggest campuses. One, one of the most major campuses around the world and one of the biggest markets around the world. Every single individual being here, every single individual being here fighting for the students, fighting against this system, fighting against the government, fighting for our people in Gaza and for their liberation one day, inshallah, it means something. So I'm going to ask you two questions. I'm going to ask you all two questions. If it applies to you, I want you to make some noise. For those of you that are here today, for those of you that are here today and are Palestinian, Make some noise! Okay. That was, that was very pathetic, bro. I don't try to make it seem like you are, okay? For those of you that are Palestinian, make some noise! For those of you that are not Palestinian, make some noise!
For those of us that are here that are Palestinian, when we see all of you in the streets, when we see all of you on these campuses with us, it does something for us. Like I mentioned earlier at the beginning of our rally, there's a flame inside each and every single one of us. Every single time that we come to these protests, every single time we go to these actions, these rallies, these campuses, wherever it may be, this flame, it ignites. It continues to ignite. And this flame will not stop igniting until one day, inshallah, when Palestine is liberated. So, so understand, understand that two weeks ago, just two weeks ago, at the University in Colombia, they decided to start this beautiful revolution. They decided to start the student intifada, something that so many of us would never have thought of, so many of us would cower to even think of. These students, these people that hold the power, these students that are braver than every single one of us, they decided to stand and say, we will not stop. Now, just two weeks later, we have grown to over 150 campuses worldwide. That is amazing. And one more thing just before I pass the mic off to the students. I want every single person here to listen for one moment with their heart and with their eyes and with their ears. Just for one moment. Put your phones away live in this moment as I say these powerful words. Every single time that you guys come to these streets, you guys come because an organization posts online and tells you to come. Okay, a lot of you, you see it on social media, we come, this is how we keep track of what's going on. But I want you to remember that at the end of the day, you do what you do here for a couple of reasons. The first reason that you do what you do here is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the first reason. The second reason what you do is because every single time that we get to sleep in our beds at night, in our warm clothing, in our beds with shelters over our head, with foods in our kitchen, with water running whenever we need it, the people in Gaza are continuing to suffer. They are continuing to go under carpet bombing. This ongoing genocide has reached over 210 days. So every single time you come out into these streets, remember, remember that we are doing something not just, not just for our people that are here, but also our people in Gaza, our people in Sudan, our people all around the world that are facing any type of oppression, any type of injustice. And if each and every single one of you is to look around right now, look to your left and look to your right, genuinely, look to your left and look to your right right now. Not every single person here is the same color as you. Not every single person here is the same religion as you, the same creed. They are not the same people. We are not all Palestinian, but we truly are all Palestinian on the inside. And that's what matters. So, regardless of your race, regardless of your religion, your ethnicity, what walk of life you're from, none of that shit matters because at the end of the day, we do this for humanity. We do this for our people in Gaza. We do this for our people that are facing constant oppression. And we do this for our people in cries, in hope that one day, inshallah, inshallah, ya Rab, Palestine will be liberated from the river to the sea and we will all be granted the right to return. Y'all think of that, I'm gonna hand it off to the students now. The students have reached day three of the encampment. This is our campus, and they tried to kick us off for shame! shame. I have one very simple message. UFT, your hands are red! 15,000 children dead! Let me, let me fix that. They have continued to attempt to silence the students every time. Sure. We are out here condemning them for funding a genocide, and they continue to try to silence us. They say, and they try to remove us from their campus. They try to expel us. They try to arrest us for shame. 
Show! So there's one very simple thing I'm going to say. The more they try to silence us, you will respond with, the louder we will be. Okay? Let's try it. The more they...